but Nike advertising executive Dan Whedon actually credited Gary Gilmore's final words as the inspiration behind the shoe brand's tagline. Anyone that's wearing Nike, just do it. That was someone's last words. Yo, this whole time I thought just do it was something inspirational, like just do it. Just do it was someone's last words before they died. <laughs> Yo. What's good YouTube? We're currently reacting to the last words of death row inmates. If you're watching from YouTube, make sure you guys check the link in the description and join us on Twitch. We're live every day. Yes, every day. And make sure you guys join the Discord link in the description as well. And I've been molesting kids nonstop since I was 13 years old. Over half my- Since 13? You weird ass nigga. Bro been doing this since he was a kid. I can guarantee I'd do it again and sooner or later I would kill another child. I've done Bro's it before, confident. And at the time I liked it. In 1989, Wesley he Allen Dodd pleaded guilty to his crimes of taking the lives of three boys. Dodd killed brothers William Near, 10, and Cole Near, 11, in a Vancouver. He killed his brothers as well? This nigga's a whole menace now. I, I wonder what his last words were. Vancouver Park before strangling four year old Lee Iselli a month later. In 1990, Why? Dodd was sentenced to death. He was given the option of lethal injection or death by hanging. He chose to be hanged for his crimes and dropped all appeals, believing he had to die. He stated numerous times, I will kill and rip again and enjoy every minute of it. Dodd was hanged on- He enjoys it, that weird ass- I'm sorry, no more pausing, no more pausing, but damn, he enjoys this shit. On the 5th of January, 1993, his final words were, I was once asked by somebody, I don't remember who, if there was any way sex offenders could be stopped. I said, no, I was wrong. I was wrong when I said there was no hope, no peace. There is hope. There is peace. I found both in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look to the Lord and you will find peace. Well, that's some intent. Damn, like, would y'all say that's like a cheat code? Like, correct me if I'm wrong. In Christianity, if you convert, that means all your sins are forgiven, right? I I'm not a Christian, so I wouldn't know. No, no. They told me, yeah, if you convert to that religion, then all your sins are forgiven. But this man used a cheat code, bro. R2, L2, left, right, circle, spin. He's playing life like it's a GTA code. This nigga said, I repented. Boom, I'm going to heaven. Who cares if I did all of that? That's crazy. Hence, final words. Didn't leave them hanging on a word whatsoever. Am I pure evil? Am I the face of terror sitting here in front of you? Or am I able to talk to you man to man? Most people in this country think you are the face of evil, don't they? They do. But sitting down here now, and let me make clear, I'm not sitting here trying to influence you. And I'm not putting on a game face. Uh, I'm not conning anybody. I'm just being me. In 1995, Timothy McVeigh took on the nickname Oklahoma City Bomber after setting off a bomb he created that killed 149 adults and 19 children at Damn. an Oklahoma City federal building. He was sentenced to death, and when his time came in 2001, he chose to remain silent the entire time the lethal injection took place. He did, however, leave a note behind in place of his valid final words, what did he quoting say? the last few lines of the poem Invictus by Sir William Ernest Henley. Timothy McVeigh was executed by lethal injection on the 11th of June, 2001. His final words were written, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. If you ask any of the- And yeah, bruh, you're the captain of your fate and you led that shit down to lethal injection. That is a L ass fate, you dumbass nigga. That life is horrible. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, you, you kill more than 100 people you don't deserve good treatment, you weird ass nigga. The families of the Oklahoma City bombers' victims, they'd say he got off easy. And considering some of the other people on this list, he pretty much did. For those people who have been given the death penalty, who have been convicted of taking another's life. Yo, Chad, would you, would you rather get the death sentence or life in prison if you had to choose? The, the only reason why I could see, like, the argument for life is because, like, oh, if you're religious, then you could spend that time, like, really getting closer to your God and just repenting, so. What should society do? Okay, well, one of the main arguments of the death penalty is that it will potentially deter other people from committing crimes. Do you think it will? Definitely not. The case of Robert Sullivan is an interesting one. That's interesting, y'all. I never really thought about it. Do you guys think death penalties are... I used to think it's a deterrent. If you're going to die for your crimes, yes, you're not going to commit it. I, I never really thought, yo, maybe some people actually do want to die. And the fact that they know they could do a crime with the potential of dying, I don't know. Convicted of murdering Donald Schmidt, an employee in the Howard Johnson restaurant where Sullivan used to work, Schmidt was shot in the head twice with the use of a shotgun in 1972. Sullivan was on death row for over 10 years. Damn. And he fought the death penalty with support from the likes of Pope John Paul II. Unfortunately for Sullivan, 
it was unsuccessful in convincing the Supreme Court that the death penalty was an ineffective, cruel punishment. Sullivan was executed via electric chair on the 1st of December, 1983. Sullivan delivered his final words to fighting the very cause of his death. In spite of what is about to happen to me, do not quit. I hold no malice to none. May God bless us all. Sullivan spent so much of his sentence, never fighting the charges against him, but instead fighting the punishment. His final words, while accepting, are doused in defeat that he wasn't able to change his fate. Are you frightened about next week? Well, death is death. A person said one time, he said, that's a horrible way of dying. I said, what is a good way? Could you tell me what a good way is to die? Billy Wayne Coble was arrested for the murder of Robert and Zelda Veacher, his estranged wife's parents, and her brother, Bobby Veacher, in 1989. Before he murdered Kane Veacher's family, he went to her home and tied her and her daughters up. Coble remains the oldest man to be executed in Texas in more than 100 years. The death penalty was reinstated in Texas in 1982. A little under a decade before the crimes Billy Wayne Coble committed landed him in prison and on death row. Billy Wayne Coble was executed via lethal injection on the 28th of February 2019. His rapid fire final words were Yo, he had the, the worst of both worlds. He had life and he had the death. Damn. This nigga served out a life sentence just to get the death penalty as well. Yes, sir. That'll be five dollars. I love you. I love you and I love you. Mike, I love you. Where's Nelly at? I love you. That will be five dollars. Take care. I don't really know what five out of everything you could have said that was your last words why do you sound like a cashier five dollars means but when he said this it was all directed at his family made up of five people all in attendance coincidence from texas to florida and from a lesser known killer to one of the most well-known killers let's move on to my experience with i say pornography generally but with pornography that deals on a violent level with sexuality is that who i think it is um, is it once you become addicted to it, and I look at this as a kind of addiction, uh, like other kinds of addiction, of addiction, you keep, I would keep looking for more potent, more explicit, yeah, more graphic aggressive. kinds of material. Like an addiction, you keep craving something which is harder, harder, something which, which gives you a greater uh, sense of, of, of uh, excitement. Ted Bundy is one of the most notorious serial killers known to the world. He's been the subject of countless films He's ugly. and documentaries He's ugly. for his various acts of abuse and violence perpetrated throughout the 70s. Bundy, in his time, murdered more than 30 women. Many claim that Bundy's final words are nothing more than the means of a sociopath to elicit sympathy from the ones he hurt most. Words are nothing more than Hold the on. means of a sociopath. Bro, I'm sorry, but she's fine as hell. Why are you sipping for Ted Bundy's ugly ass? I'm just calling it how it is, chat. She looks good to me. To elicit sympathy from the ones he hurt most. It doesn't necessarily mean- Chat, I might have to go on a murdering spree on GTA. Mean They actually mean what they're saying. In the case of Bundy, nobody will ever really know. His final words for many were creepy, considering the heinous nature of Ted's crimes. Ted Bundy was thrown in the electric chair on the 24th of January, 1989. Bundy's final words were, I'd like you to give my love to my family and my friends. Oh, Ted, you, you creep. <laughs> that commentary. Fair. The thing about psychos is you never really know what the hell is going on in their head. And in the case of Ted Bundy, I'm not sure the truth will ever really be known or understood. Speaking of never understanding a psycho. How are you? Prepared yourself for tomorrow morning. I'm sorry, bro. I know hideous and ugly are strong words, but she's one ugly ass. Bitch. I'm sorry. I, I have to say it, Chad. I know everyone's beautiful in their own way, except her. I'm all right with it. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Hey, I was tortured at BCI. Eileen Wernos was a prolific criminal between 1989 and 1990. Over seven bodies of middle aged white men were all discovered throughout central Florida. They'd been robbed and shot before Eileen stole their cars. Eileen Damn. never showed remorse for her actions. She dropped all attempts at getting off death row when she claimed that she'd do it again if released and even stated, I have hate crawling through my system. Damn. During her time in prison, she accused everyone from guards to prisoners of tainting her food and torturing her. Eileen Wernos was executed via lethal injection on the 9th of October, 2002. Her final words were weird to say the least. I think weird might be an understatement. What Before is it? Before execution, Eileen Wernos looked at the executioner and everyone else to deliver this haunting set of final words. What did she I'd say? I'd just like to say, I'm sailing with the rock and I'll be back 
like Independence Day, with Jesus, June 6th, like the movie, Big Mothership and all. I'll be back. Well, that was a whole bunch of WTF. Don't worry. If you guys were in their like position, like what, what would your like final words be? This would be my last words, right? Let's pretend this is an execution chair, right? Ah, oh, shit, what should I say? Cause you only get one shot at this. I'm gonna go out like Goldie Roger from One Piece. I'm gonna be like, my treasure is out in the seas. Go find it. You are! <laughs> Tell me that's not a badass way to go out. All right. We're not done with crazy just yet. Our next death row serial killer was a religious man. Too bad that religion was praising Satan. A serial killer comes about by circumstances and like, uh, is that Richard Ramirez? Poverty, drugs, child abuse. Or am I tripping? These things, you know. I know him. I know him, uh, Chad. Contribute to a person. I made a video. Uh, to a person's frustration and anger. And, uh, and uh, at some point in life, he explodes. Between 1984 and 1985, Richard Ramirez terrorized He's California ugly. and was nicknamed the Night Stalker. Across LA County, he'd break into homes and use various weapons like guns, knives, and even hammers to butcher his victims. Ramirez didn't discriminate in who he attacked. His youngest victim was six, and his oldest was 83. Before killing his victims. Bro, that annoys me, bro. Your youngest victim is six, and I don't know if y'all know, but like y'all know Richard Ramirez has simps, right? There's like there's a bunch of girls that are simping for him. I usually have to search his name. I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. Maybe it's kind of weird to be simping for a guy who killed a six-year-old. He'd Finally, in 1989, the serial killer and devout Satan worshipper was brought to justice. He was sentenced to death for 13 murders, 5 attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, and 13 burglaries. Richard Ramirez, while sentenced to death, died just before his execution in 2013. His final reported words were, Hail Satan. It's funny, Weirdo. because when it comes to the next death row murderer, we have someone who might as well be the devil. That one mother that gets on television all the time who thinks I should be uh, given 33 injections. I think she ought to take 33 Valiums and go lay down. Also known as the Killer Clown, John Wayne Gacy was responsible for the murders of over 33 young men and boys. Gacy would lure his victims in with the promise of a job, drugs, alcohol, or money for sex. Otherwise, he'd simply grab them off the street or con them using a sheriff's badge. Before murdering and burying the bodies, Gacy would and torture his victims repeatedly. In Gacy's private life, he was a member of the Jolly Joker Clown Club, which is one of the reasons for his nickname, The Clown. The other reason, he'd always tell his victims as he killed them, this is the final trick. After repeatedly playing tricks on them as a means of torture, John Wayne Gacy was executed via lethal injection on the 10th of May, 1990. Nigga, what was your final trick? Smashing them, that's his final trick? Hopefully not, bro. He's ugly as shit. His final words, emblematic of his lacking empathy or ownership of his crimes, were, kiss my ass. <laughs> the, no, the, day, the only reason I laughed was because, nigga, out of everything you could have said, nigga, kiss my ass. This nigga did not care. He did not regret any of that. A charming John Wayne Gacy was nothing more than a clown. Let's imagine his character's name was Bozo. Well, Bozo's act was cut short, and thank God for that. But our next death row inmate was a fighter who fought against the very same capital punishment that took the lives of many on this list. He wasn't successful, but he tried. It caught me off guard. Uh, uh, I didn't think mine would be the first one signed. Uh, after it was signed, no, uh, well, it was just something he had to accept. Uh. John Spankelink was a drifter who was charged and convicted of murdering a traveling companion. Spankelink never wavered in his convictions that what he did was done out of self-defense. Spankelink was the first man to be placed on death row in Florida after the U.S. Supreme Court reinstated capital punishment in 1976. Spankelink was executed via electric chair on the 25th of May, 1979. His final words, a comment on the system of capital punishment as a whole, were... Capital punishment. Them without the capital, get the punishment. For everyone on this list, John Spankelink fought against the reinstatement of the death penalty in the US. While he wasn't successful and ended up being the first in Florida to get the death penalty, our Damn. final death row inmate is thankfully not another The nigga tried, tried fighting to not get the electric chair just to get it. That's crazy. Person from Florida, which, judging by this list, puts the capital in capital punishment. Honestly, after the amount of death row inmates that have died in Florida, I wonder if Florida needs to be arrested and tried as a serial killer. I mean, you're aboard the dispenser's privilege, and uh, I've always thought the privileges were sought, desired, earned, and deserved. And uh, I seek nothing from you. 
I don't desire anything from you. I haven't earned anything. I don't deserve anything either. Gary Gilmore was the first man to be executed following the Supreme Court decision allowing capital punishment to resume in the United States in mm. 1976. Gilmore was convicted of murdering a motel manager in Utah, which resulted in his death sentence. Interesting fact, but Nike advertising executive Dan Whedon actually credited Gary Gilmore's final words as the inspiration behind the shoe brand's tagline. Gary Gilmore was executed via firing squad on the 17th of January, 1977. Anyone that's wearing Nike, just do it. That was someone's last words. Yo, this whole time I thought just do it was something inspirational, like just do it. Nigga, just do it was someone's last words before they died.